Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. I'm your host, The Bookworm. As you can see, I'm not in my usual set. The reason? I'm staying with my family while working at my local film festival. Because of the film festival, I'm going to have to put the show on hold the week after next, because I'm going to be way too busy to dedicate my time to do both. But enough of that. After last week's What the Hell, I wanted to enjoy myself with one of my favorite series that features my favorite subject. Dragons. That's right. We're going back to the world of Temriere. Sit back and relax as we dive into Throne of Jade, book two in the Temriere series by Naomi Novik. He's a real nowhere man sitting in his nowhere land making all I will be hanged first, Lawrence said flatly, past caring that he was speaking in such terms to the First Lord of the Admiralty, the death of his career if he had still been a naval officer, and it could scarcely do him any good even as an aviator. Yet if they meant to send Temuyer away, back to China, his career as an aviator was finished. He would never accept a position with any other dragon, none other would even compare to Lawrence's mind and he would not subject a hatchling to being second best when there were men in the corpse line six deep for the chance. Young Jing did not say anything, but his lips tightened. His attendants shifted and murmured amongst themselves in their own language. Lawrence did not think he was imagining the hint of disdain in their tone, directed less at himself than at Barham, and the First Lord eventually shared the impression, his face growing molted and choleric with the effort of preserving the appearance of calm. By God, Lawrence, if you imagine you can stand here in the middle of Whitehall and mutiny, you are wrong. I think perhaps you are forgetting that your first duty is to your country and your king, not to this dragon of yours. No, sir, it is you who are forgetting. It was for duty I put Tamriere into harness, sacrificing my naval rank, with no knowledge then that he was any breed truly out of the ordinary, much less a celestial, Lawrence said. And for duty, I took him through a difficult training and into a hard and dangerous service. For duty, I have taken him into battle and asked him to hazard his life and happiness. I will not answer such loyal service with lies and dissent. Enough noise there, Burham said. Anyone would think you are being asked to hand over your firstborn. I am sorry if you have made such a pet of the creature you cannot bear to lose him. Temriere is neither my pet nor my property, Sir Lawrence snapped. He has served England and the King as much as I have, or you yourself. And now, because he does not choose to go back to China, you stand there and ask me to lie to him. I cannot imagine what claim to honor I should have if I agree to it. Indeed, he added, unable to restrain himself. I wonder that you should even have made the proposal. I wonder at it greatly. If you didn't see my review of the first book, His Majesty's Dragon, which you should read because it's freaking amazing, you should leave right now because I'm going to spoil most of the first book. But here's the basic premise to get you interested into reading it. The Napoleonic Wars with Air Force Dragon. Shut up and take my money. If that doesn't get you interested into reading it, I don't know what will. Throne of Jade picks up shortly after Lawrence and Temriere help stop Napoleon's invasion of England. During the battle, Lawrence learns that Temriere is a celestial, a rare breed only for the royal family of China. When word of Temriere reaches China, the emperor's brother comes to bring him back but Lawrence and Temriere's bond is too strong to separate them by normal means. It is then decided that Lawrence will go with Temriere to China, both in hope to keep Temriere and for better trade with the Chinese. But the Chinese will do anything to show Temriere why he should leave everything behind, even if it means killing Lawrence. The first book was a great debut into the world of Temriere, and its sequel meets and expands on the high standards it already placed on itself. This one still remains as one of my favorite entries in the series, cause of two reasons. Uh, technically three, but we'll get there when we get there. The first is we see more of the world. His Majesty's Dragon was focused more on how dragons were raised, viewed, and fought in England. It gave us a foothold to get us into the series. In Throne of Jade, we are shown more of the world, both through the journey to China and China itself. 
we see how the Chinese raise and treat their dragons, expanding our view of how different cultures view these amazing creatures. The second reason is the test of Lawrence and Temriere's friendship. While the first one showed how the two became friends, the second puts their friendship to the test. From the first chapter when Lawrence goes against his superiors about abandoning Temriere to their revelations about China's culture. Without going into spoilers, the two see how China's view on dragons are superior over England's. It's a truth that Lawrence can't deny, and when we see how happy Temriere is, he wonders if it will be better for him to stay in China. The story itself is a big game of politics as the characters try to learn why Temriere's egg was on a ship for Napoleon to why the Chinese want him back so badly. And it doesn't stop there. There are politics on the ship between the British Navy and the aviators, the issues of slavery, and members of government trying to overthrow each other, as well as Lawrence's own goals that conflict with the Chinese and his own government. Politics is the name of the game for Throne of Jade. It's a giant game of Chinese checkers. And it's amazing with all its mystery and intrigue. The biggest reason I love this book is you can feel its echoes throughout the entire series as it changes everything we assume from the first book to the end of the second. Exploring new lands, new dragons, new ideas, and new characters that you'll love and hate. The one thing that might hurt the book for some is that the middle can go on for too long. Not that nothing happens, it just goes on too long for its own good. If you love His Majesty's Dragon, then you'll love Throne of Jade, as it sets the bar even higher than before. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about Throne of Jade? Next week will be my last review before I go on my short break. But before that, we will take an interesting look at our modern culture. Till next time, have a nice day.